days uh, newspapers are quite full with Mr. Putin's reappearance after 10 days of absence. And there are many speculations going around as to uh, what might have happened. Uh, and well, at least some of the scenarios have now been discredited by his reappearance. But he hasn't bothered to shed light yet on what he did for the past 10 days. Um, so I would like to walk you through some of the possibilities and also look, yeah, tell a little bit about the spiritual or energetic perspective on the matter. Um, so there have been some thoughts that he might have been killed, there might have been a coup, uh, there might be something seriously wrong with him, um, various scenarios which uh, would have spelled doom for Mr. Putin. Um, if we, however, do as the Washington Post does and just look at the markets, then you see that the Russian uh, stocks and the ruble have made a very small dip, a very small decline, but hardly anything happened. Um, so we can assume that people who are big tycoons, big oligarchs, um, who have and make a lot of money in business, are very well informed people. And if there would be a chance of something serious having happened to Mr. Putin, they would have hedged their bets. They would have sold off risky assets uh, to prevent themselves from taking a loss. Because it is better to suffer a little bit of loss than to risk losing a much, very much. So there would have been protection buying in the form of options or reducing risk in the form of selling. Uh, very little of that has happened, so we can conclude that the people in the know, the real uh, yeah, uh, big financial powers, knew that there was nothing serious happening or there was no, not even a chance or a risk of something serious happening. Otherwise we would have seen that reflected in the market. So now we know that they know, but we still don't know what they know. Um, so for that I want to have a look at the picture of Mr. Putin um, just before he went on his leave. So I have here a picture of him in February. As you can see in this picture, if you can uh, yeah, read ethereal energy, so the chi, the life force, and you will see that Mr. Putin is, as normal, um, a very stressed person who thinks a lot. A lot of the energy is concentrated around uh, the head. And you will also see that the energy around the, the liver, um, which is also the area where the fire meridians and the wood meridians come together, um, the energy there is very chaotic. Um, so that can indicate a metabolic dysfunction, uh, it can also indicate a disease, um, but something is definitely sure, it is not functioning optimally. And this can be yeah, also due to stress, because stress also upsets the metabolism of the liver. So uh, dysfunctioning liver is actually quite normal for people who have suffered periods of prolonged stress. It can happen very early, already in a few months, but generally we see it after people have spent like two years or more in politics that yeah, the liver's um, reserves start to run out after one year and then the condition of the liver starts to deteriorate because there are no stress-free periods for the person to recover in. Um, this unhealthy state, which politicians uh, yeah, generally degenerate into, is very much a result of our political system. So, in our political system, we have elections and we have party politics. Um, so, the political arena is very much an arena where the yeah, fighting is constant. People are constantly vying for position, making coalitions. And that happens both within your party and also between parties and also between countries. So a politician in a leadership position, such as uh, Vladimir Putin, he has to yeah, be aware of the threat emerging from his own party. 
he has to be aware of the threats of other parties and counter them and he has to manage his own country, his own population and also manage external threats to his country. And um, usually you can count on at least one of these factors creating stress. So the stress level is almost constant because all these four things have their cycles and they all periodically create periods of stress. The other big problem is that the politician uh, almost always stands alone. In politics there are temporary alliances but there's usually quite little loyalty or lifelong friendships um, because people are interested in power and when a person becomes a liability to their own position they're usually discarded or betrayed or gotten rid of somehow uh, because politics is the art of how to get power and how to keep power and this is a constant struggle so what we find is that modern politicians have high stress levels uh, what we also find is that politicians are continually fighting and um, this actually combines to a very black and white thinking people start to think in uh, enemies in allies and in good and in bad and usually the kind of like more detailed thinking uh, which is essential for insight for wisdom for vision uh, tends to disappear as a result of our political system so many people wonder what happened to all the visionary leaders why aren't they there anymore well we degenerate our visionary leaders to pit fighters um, so ultimately it would be good to for people in such positions to have a little bit more security so they can focus on things they should be doing for the people because a leader should be working for the benefit of the country for the benefit of the citizens of his country he should not be working to maintain his position he should not be working to win the next election uh, these things should be secondary to the interests of the nation but they are, alas they are not anymore which gives me a little sidetrack if we look at uh, the position of our researchers our artists our scientists um, because in the Netherlands and in some other countries it used to be that universities offered lifelong positions to their professors so the professor would be assured of uh, yeah, enough income to support himself and because of this he could devote himself completely and without reserve to his philosophies, to his ideas, to his research without having to be afraid of censorship, of losing his job, of losing his money by saying the wrong thing or upsetting somebody um, but what we see now is that the positions are often paid for by companies so a person wants to teach pharmacology well the university will receive a big grant from some pharmaceutical company so that the person can teach there and has a salary that means that the person's salary is directly tied to the pharmaceutical company which has interests in what is researched what is published what is taught and this way knowledge truth art uh, becomes a tool for the people with power rather than it is a tool for the benefit of the people as a whole uh, to grow to broaden their minds uh, in the interest of knowledge or art or beauty or wisdom or truth and a very similar thing is happening in politics it used to be that um, a person would be elected because of the interests of the nation so people would realize my nation needs a certain something and this person can offer a certain something so let's give this person the power the influence the position he or she needs but we find now that society is much more individualized people are no longer thinking of the best interest of the nation they're thinking of their own best interests so you have lobby groups and since there is a limited amount of resources 
has a limited amount of money which the government has able to spend in the form of subsidies, of tax benefits, of grants. Um, so it then becomes about division. Who will get what? And everybody is trying to yeah, push away the other ones to get more. So you can think of like a, a dog with puppies and the stronger puppies are shoving aside the weaker puppies so they can drink all the milk. And this is basically what is now happening with lobbying in politics. So people with power are trying to yeah, get political influence so they will be fed the most from the public funds. They will benefit the most. So unfortunately politicians start serving the interest of the nation less and less and become more and more entangled within the battles which happen in the market between different sectors, between different companies um, to yeah, amass wealth, amass possessions. So ultimately it's, it are more and more the companies and the financial markets which dictate policy and which politicians should or should not have power. So that brings us again back to Mr. Putin. So the poor man is suffering from stress, his health is deteriorating. He must have informed the people in the markets or in the know that was nothing serious happening, otherwise he, his disappearance would have caused much more speculation and market instability, which would have cost people money. And if we look at the pictures of his return, uh, which were taken today, and we look at, yeah, basically, um, uh, again, at the energy policy. few things have changed. One, the energy is more clear, um, he, so apparently he's less stressed, he's more focused. We also find that the energy is slightly less. So whatever he has done, uh, although it has given him a period of rest where he, his stress levels were reduced, it also has removed some of his energy. And if we look at the area around his liver, we found that instead of a very chaotic energy, we find a very white energy. Uh, for the people who know how to read uh, colors in auras, um, white usually uh, indicates a destructive, constructive energy. So either new things are growing or things are being destroyed. So it can be an indication of uh, an infection or an injury. Um, so it is very likely that from my uh, perspective, that he probably had a gallstone removed or something similar happened in that area. Uh, it's only a small wound, but wounds have to heal, so this would generate such a reaction. Um, it can also be that there was something more serious and that um, uh, part of the liver would have been removed because of a cancer, but I saw no black spots in the photos prior just a general dysfunction of the liver, um, but uh, no black spots, so I don't think there was a cancer. I do see that also the energy in the liver around the area is more harmonious, so I think that the uh, gold duct has become, had become blocked and has now become unblocked, which allows the toxins to be removed from the liver in a normal sense instead of building up in the liver as happens when a, a gold duct is blocked. So, that's my reading of the situation. Thank you for listening.